good morning this is vmna working as assistant professor from department of csn today we'll discuss about the internet of things the main concepts discussed here is the conceptual framework of iot what are the different technologies behind this iot sources of iot m to m communication and examples of the iot the definition of the iot internet of things is a system which which are interrelated with the mechanical or computer devices animals or people that are that are provides with unique identifiers without the human to human or human intervention we transfer the data by using internet that is what we call internet of things and it is also refers to as a network to connect anything with internet based protocols to conduct the information exchange and communication in order to achieve small recognition positioning tracing monitoring and administration the different characteristics of the iot are interconnectivity things related services heterogeneity and dynamic changes enormous scale safety and connectivity first one is interconnectivity that means iot can be interconnected with communication infrastructure with global information things related services this things related services with has the provides the constraints like privacy protection semantic consistency between virtual and physical things and in order to provide this things related services within the constraints of things it proposes both technologies in physical world as well as information world heterogeneity heterogeneity means it can based on or working on any hardware platforms and networks so this can interconnect with or interact with other devices or service platforms through different networks dynamic changes the state of devices changes dynamically like example walking sleeping connected or disconnected as well as the connected context of devices like uh, which includes the speed location and more number of uh, more number of uh, devices can change the dynamical enormous scale the next pro characteristic of iot is enormous scale the number of devices need to be managed and communicated with each other with a uh, simple or with at least uh, an order of magnitude which is larger than the devices connected to the internet the next characteristic of iot is safety safety becomes an adjoint issue in nowadays this safety includes the personal data or physical well being data security the endpoints the networks and data moving across all of it mean it create the security paradigm connectivity this connectivity enables the compatibility and network accessibility accessibility is getting a network well compatibility means we provide the common ability to consume and produce the data this is the architectural view of the iot it contains the four layers that is sensor layer or a smart device communication layer or network device support application support layer or service support and application layer these are the four different layers sensor layer which contains the sensor networks and network and communication layer means which has the transport layers and the service support or application layers and application layers which contains the iot applications in this first we will discuss about sensor layer or smart device this is the lowest layer which is name itself it is sensor layer that means it is integrated with the sensors and the sensors interconnect with physical and digital worlds using along with real time information different types of sensors for used for different purposes for example for temperature we will use one sensor that is called temperature sensor and speed sensor humidity pressure electricity movement sensors etc and it also have the degree of memory and enabling them to record a certain number of measurements sensor can measure the physical property and that property converted into converted into signal that signal can be understand by the instrument and sensors are grouped with unique purposes like environmental sensors body sensors home appliance sensors vehicle telemetric sensors etc and the sensors can be connected to the large sensor gateways like local area networks or personal area networks like zigbee bluetooth ultra wideband and sensors use low power and low data rate connectivity they typically form a networks commonly wireless sensor networks this is about the sensor layer 
The next layer is gateway and network layer. It contains the volume of the data, large volume of the data will be produced by the sensors and it has that robust and high performance with both wired and wireless network infrastructures and it supports the machine to machine networks and their applications also and it provides the, some of the IoT services and applications like high speed transaction services, context aware applications and multiple networks with various technologies etc. And these networks can be in the form of both private means only access by some people, public can be accessed by anyone and both public and private that is called hybrid model that are built to support the communication requirements for bandwidth, security and latency. And this network layer uses various gateways like microcontrollers, microprocessors and gateway networks like GSM, GPRS, Wi-Fi etc. Next architectural view, next layer is management service layer. This management service processing the information possible through controls, security controls, analytics and modeling and management of the devices. The most important feature of this layer is mainly using business and process rule engines. IoT brings the connection and interaction of the objects and systems together which provide the information of the events and temperature of the goods and current location and traffic data. And some of that requires the response to immediate situations such as reacting to emergencies on patients health we will use the this service layer. And this supports the formulation of the design logics and trigger interactive and automated process which is more responsive to the IoT system. And various analytic tools are used to extract the, this info, relevant information and large volume of the raw data and process at faster rate. And last layer is application layer. This application layer covers the smart applications or environment spaces in various domains like transportation, lifestyle, cities, buildings, factories, agriculture, chain, supply chain, emergency, healthcare, retail, culture and tourism, environments and energy. This IoT architectural view consists of the four layers, application layer, management service layer, network layer and sensor layers. Then next we will discuss the technologies, what are the different technologies behind this IoT. This IoT provides the hardware, software and network backbone communications. Hardware, why it plays a vital role in communicating with the parameters from IoT to publisher or subscriber. And it effectively put the data in the format of uh, constraint applications, CVAP, RPL, or hypertext transfer protocol, HTTP, RESTful, my MQTT, MSSQ, transfer protocol, XMPP. And communication. The communication is done through the Ethernet, or 6 low pan, or RFID, Zigbee, Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, 2G or 3G or 4G and WiMAX. It uses the technology network backbones or internet protocols that is internet protocol with version 4 and 6 and also uses user datagram protocol and low pan networks. Software means we use the RIOT, OS and ThinSquare, MistFilmSquare, Eclipse IoT network, cloud platforms or data centers. Nimbit machine learning algorithm and software. These are the different technologies used behind this IoT and server and technology. IoT servers are enterprise servers, are cloud servers, application servers, data servers and databases. So different components which are used for this server technology. Online platforms and data acquiring that is integration, aggregation, organizing and analyzing and use of web applications, services and business process and also device identification and device identity management and their accessing modes. These are the server and technologies. And major components of the IoT system are first one is physical object with embedded software into hardware. Object embedded software into hardware. That means here we will use sensors and control units. Sensors are electronic devices. Controls uh, which sense the physical environment. When come to control units, with commonly microcontrollers or a chip, custom chip that can comprise a processor or memory and several units 
several units which interface together. Hardware consists of microcontrollers, firmware, sensors, control units, actuators, etc. Communication module. Communication module consists of uh, software uh, devices like application programming interfaces, APIs and device interfaces and middleware for creating communication stacks using constrained application CVA, AP and internet protocol version 4 and 6 and other protocols also. Software for actions on messages which command which devices we have to receive and which give the output to the activators. What is the input and what is the output which enables the action by using LEDs, glowing LEDs or robotic hand and movement. The next different sources of the IoT. We can use the Arduino boards. Arduino boards means which includes the Wi-Fi, Ethernet, USB ports or micro SD card slots or three wrist buttons which runs on the Linux. Intel Galileo board. This is also a certified Arduino development board with Intel x86 and power over Ethernet and six analog inputs. Beagle board. This is very low power requirement like simply it looks like a card and it can run on any Android or Linux. It is an open source hardware which designs and software for the IoT devices. And Raspberry Pi. This is Wi-Fi connected devices which includes open source RAS Big. These are the different sources of the IoT. Arduino boards, Galileo boards, Beagle boards and Raspberry Pi boards. The next one is MTM architecture. MTM means machine to machine communication, machine to machine architecture. M2M refers to the communication between object or device at machine with other same type of machine or same type of device which controls the monitoring or controlling purposes. M2M to IoT Technology closely related to IoT which uses smart devices to collect data and transmit it through the internet. When come to M2M which is the device to device communication which is also for coordinated monitoring and controlling purposes only. In this we will use the M2, it contains the M2M architecture contains three domains that is M2M device domain, M2M network domain and M2M application domains. In device domains we will connect in the interface through communication and processing units and edge computing data that is data element analysis and transformation. And next network domains, in this we will use the network management, data analysis, abstraction, accumulation, and connectivity communication and processing units. M2M application domains means this is M2M application services, used for application services. So this architecture consists of three domains, M2M device domain, M2M network domain, M2M application domain. Device management domain consists of three entities, physical, communication interface and gateway devices. When come to communication interface is a port or subsystem which receives the input from one end and which gives the data to the other end. An M2M network domain consists of M2M server. This is the device identity management, data analytics and data and device management which is similar to the IoT architecture level. These are the some of the examples of the IoT. In this picture, we will see that some of the airplanes, LEDs, mobiles, printers, laptops, vehicles, these all are connected to the internet of things. So, so these are all the examples of the IoT. When come to uh, smart home applications, at home application we will use the sensors for glowing, uh, glowing uh, uh, LED lights or by switch on the fans or for TVs and for watches, mobiles etc. In this smart home we have the smart home control unit which has the surveillance camera and we have connected by using viral LANs and the GPRS Wi-Fi and UWP. The next we have the service provide infrastructure which cloud VPN and video we can provide the any cloud service provider or virtual private networks or video networks. Sensors and actuations manage the smart home with internet connection. We will connect the it to the internet. Wide or wireless sensors we can use and we can also use the security sensors, thermostats and macro uh, and many more sensors. In the device layer we will connect the devices which are used to monitor the like monitor like a temperature, lighting, power meters and so on. 
and sensor records any changes while doing these operations in devices when the changes comes it directly communicates to the intermediate layer that is GP by using or via GPRS, Wi-Fi etc. Using this data is uploaded into the cloud through the internet with proper authentication. The cloud provides this information to the user by sending emails or SMS or push notifications by using uh, which uh, user could pay the electric bill, telephone bill, switch off the lights or switch off the lens. These all alert messages will come through the email or SMS. So this is an example for smart home application, uh, smart home automation using IoT. Then come to differences between Internet of Things versus machine-to-machine uh, -machine communication. IoT is, made, IoT is meant for Internet of Things, M2M means machine-to-machine. When come to intelligence basis, this IoT has the device which has the objects that are responsible for decision making. M2M some degree of the intelligence. This connection type is network using various connection types. Connection is a point to point connection that is device to device connection only when M2M. And different protocols used in IoT are HTTP, Hypertext Transfer Protocol and File Transfer Protocol and Telnet. Traditional protocols and communication technologies used in the machine to machine communication. Data sharing in IoT is between applications that used to improve the end user experiences. While in M2M, data is shared with only communicating parties, that is one com device to other devices. Internet connection is required for IoT. Here M2M, that is depending on the device. And it support, IoT supports the cloud communication. It supports the point-to-point -point communication. When it comes to cloud communication, it is definitely connected to the internet. It is point-to-point communication that depending on the devices, not depending on the internet. And large number of devices at scope is large. This is for M2M is for limited services. And it supports the open API integrations. IoT supports open API integrated. There is no open APIs for M2M. And some more centric components and examples for this IoT are smart variables, big data, cloud, etc. M2M communication examples are sensors, data, and information, etc. These are the some of the differences between the Internet of Things and machine to machine communication. The main difference is this is connected to the Internet. M2M communication entire thing depends on the device, not depend on the Internet. It uses the cloud communication. It, M2M uses the point to point communication. And some examples also you have seen. Then next we will discuss about web communication protocols. This IoT or M2M device is network gateway needs to connect the two web services. This communication can be done through web connectivity. While IoT M2M methods and protocols enable the web connectivity for connected device networks. The, for communication, we use some of the key terms like application, application program interface that is API, web service, object, object model. And application, it requires some software applications for sending and creating the SMSs and measuring and sending the measuring data and also uses application programming interface. Application programming interface means it is also a software component which receives the message from one end and that consists by using GUIs, graphical user interface like buttons, checkboxes, dialog box, etc. And one more thing, web service. It refers to the software which is web protocol, web object utilized, etc. whether to report the traffic, the density. Object is also relevant to the or collection of the resources. Object model means uses of the objects for values, messages, data, or transferring the resources, or creating more or one or more object instances. And one more key term is class. Class means which is creates one or more instances. Communication gateway it provides the communication between protocols or between devices. Client means client refers to the software object which make a request for data or message from one side that is called client side. Server means opposite of the client it defining the software which sends a response that request given by a uh, request sent from the client and that request is accepted by the server and server will give the uh, response to that request. Web object it retrieves the resource from the web object 
at the other end using a web protocol and also use the broker which is a communication between two endpoint devices and proxy which receives a response from the server and uses of the client or application also and which also requests from the client for the responses retrieved or saved at proxy and communication protocol which communication between the which is used for the communication between web server and web clients and web protocols it is a protocol for connectivity of the web of web of objects or client servers and intermediate servers or firewalls firewall is one that protects the server from authentication resources unauthentic resources this firewall is mainly used for security purposes and web communication protocol used by connecting device one of the web communication protocol is rest representational state transfer it is architectural style for developing the web services it is popular and simple in fact it builds upon existing systems and it uses the http in order to achieve its objects and opposed by creating new standards it is implemented by following to fetch maintain and reach update and append the data this rest protocol used four methods get method post method put method and delete method get means name itself it is get it retrieve the resources it retrieves the resources which is catchable post which when it retrieves the get method it creates the new resource for the retrieved resources by using http protocols and put it updates an existing resources and delete means it remove the resources we call for example can call n time same thing will happen always at that time it will delete the or remove the resources so rest protocol is nothing but representation state transfer protocol which is mainly used to develop the web services which uses the four methods get post put and delete methods and representation state transfer designing principles the first principle is everything what will taken is a resources and each resource should be identified by using one unique uri unique you and it also uses the standard http methods and it allow the multiple representations for the same resources communication should always be stateless what are the communication we are taking in the stateless communications it allows the multiple resources for same resource you just http methods and which has the unique identifier and unique uh, uri for the specific resource these are the dressed design principles one more example for that one is constraint application protocol coap constraint application protocol which is specialized for transferring protocol with some constraints nodes like low power sensor nodes and actuators and constraint networks also low power and lossy network it enable those nodes to be able to talk with other constraint nodes over the internet the protocol is specified and designed for mpm applications smart energy home automation many industrial applications here we have the picture that is internet with constraint environments this combination is called as constraint application protocols here we have the client servers and client and server will transmit the information to the proxy this proxy transmit the information to the constraint application protocols and finally we will get to the to the server and coap protocol is necessary because traditional protocols like tcp ip use considered to be too heavy for applications transport control protocols and internet protocols are too heavy and old traditional protocols and one more coap protocol runs on the device which is supports udp protocol user datagram protocol which is client server communication because which is the connection led datagrams and as it is a web transfer protocol it is based on the restful architecture restful architecture provides the request and response interaction between endpoints and supports and like http server make resources under url client access those resources using the get method put method post and delete methods the coap has the different features the first one is it provide m to m communication within constrained environments and it provides a security for data by datagram transport layers security that is dtls and asynchronous messages exchange message exchange can be done in a asynchronous way and which has the low header overhead and passing complexity 
it supports the uri content and udp binding with the optional reliability supporting unicast and multi class request because udp is the connectionless datagram and coip is different for different protocols and when compared with http coip is implemented for iot and mpm environment by using udp protocol compensate for the unreliability of the udp protocol coip defines the retransmission mechanism and provide the resources and discovery mechanism with resource description and finally thank you